Hey, Dan the Wolfman here kicking it at King Moe's place. Hey, King Moe, how's it going? Chilling, man, chilling. What's going on with you? You've, you've signed this great deal, you know, uh, with, with TNA and Bellator. I mean, of course, MMA is your roots, but you got a great personality. I think you can expand. How did that whole thing come about? You know, uh, what happened was, you know, when I got cut, you know, on Bellator, and then hit me up talking about we have a deal we want to offer you, and, uh, you know, I think you'll like it, and uh, I know what to expect, so... Two, three days later, they hit me up saying that we want you to do pro wrestling and fight for Bellator. And when I heard that, I was like, "All right, let's sign." Because <laughs> you're in a you're in a boxing, you're in a pro wrestling. I mean, you've watched it growing up, and so and, and you got the personality. So why not do it, right? Yeah, why not? You know, um, you know, I feel like you know this could be another way for other other fighters to make some money. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I know D Dixie Carter, she was trying to. Uh, work with uh, Zufa while they're with Spike to get other pro fighters into pro wrestling. And it'd be a good way to cross promote and sure. market some of the fighters. And, it's the same demographic. You know, yeah, yeah. Same demographic, but um, I guess they, they shy it down, you know what I'm saying, like an airplane. Well, yeah, why, 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 you know, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's, it's, it's unprecedented in a way, you know, if you're kind of doing them at the same time. But it's not like you're the first fighter who ever did this. Gene the Bell guy I trained with, he was a pro wrestler, yeah. but he's a real catch wrestling guy. He's a real, you know, guy, skilled guy who taught other people. And, and had, like, the first MMA match in 1963 yeah, versus yeah. a boxer. Yeah. Really, you know, you've had Dan Severn, was NWA champion, going into, you know, the UFC. You had Shamrock, Pancrace, UFC, WWE, Barnett, UFC. Barnett, uh, I'm catching Japan. As a matter of fact, I remember my, my first fight in Goku, the dude that fought um, Sanji Abiro had a pro wrestling match day before the fight, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So a lot of them boys in Japan, they've been doing that, but you know, I guess it's, you know. I Why are all these punks giving you so much shit on the internet? Uh, because they're mad they go to Zufa or go to UFC, which, you know, whatever, you know, they're fans. But to me, I'm like, hey, y'all can be fans, be fans of fighters first. Because yeah. without, uh, without us, you, have, you don't have no Bellator, no UFC, no XFL, no Titan, you have nothing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Without the fighters, all you have is an organization. Yeah, and so. hitters are just hitters, you know. And in that way, I do like Bellator because Bellator takes care of the fighters. The fighters do control their destiny. You do got to get through the tournament to get the title shot, even when they sign a big name like you. And, and they've done that They've done that before. Yeah. You know, so they're keeping it to the way they yeah, started. Yeah, keeping it real. keeping it real, you know what I'm saying? I have no problem being in no tournament because it's like wrestling to me, you know. And wrestling, you know, to get that gold, you know, get that gold medal or get the get the medal at the end, you know, so you got to win the tournament. So that's what I'm gonna do. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out there and win this tournament and win it big. And you'll get probably three fights in three months, three four months, or how, whatever it is, starting in January, right? Yeah, and that's that's cool with me. You know, what I'm saying the more fights, the better. And and then you get to work your personality, learn your ringer and stuff. You're gonna go down to what Ohio Valley Wrestling? Yeah, I've, yeah. I've been there before. I was there for my WWE tryout. And. Uh, Back then, it was Jim Cornette was there running it, and so it was Tom Pritchard was there too. Now it's run by Al Snow and uh, somebody else. I'm not sure who, but I like Al Snow. Al Snow was cool. Was, Al Snow was in Dan Severn's corner at the UFC four, you know, and he was cool as hell when I tried out for Tough Enough years ago. Catch former catch wrestler, I believe. You know, knows his stuff. He knows his stuff. Yeah, so I, I, you know, I would mind working with him. You know, and I've been texting with Kurt Angle. We got some crazy things we're gonna do for uh, my first fight coming back. I might have a couple so, finishing moves for you. I have to show you. I got a couple of things that are pretty, pretty cool. Some catch stuff that's legit. Right. That would look, that would look good to the crowd, you know, from afar and stuff. Because you got to think about selling things, guys. I don't know why people have a problem with selling. You know, you know the difference. Why can't they don't know the difference? I, you know, fans, if you don't like pro wrestling, fine. But but don't 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 hate a man who can do both. And a lot of fighters have, and that's how your history of catch wrestling and fighting really does. It is really early. Really. Well, it's like this. Like, you know, the people that get it are the ones shining. The biggest, the hottest person in MMA right now is Chael Sonnen. You know, <laughs> Chael Sonnen be cutting promos left and right. You know what I'm saying? Superstar Billy Graham promos. I might as well start cutting, you know, Iceman King Parson promos. Yeah. It bees that way sometimes. You know what I'm saying? It, it took a guy who guys weren't totally, you know, let's say people weren't totally interested in Chael. And so he started, yeah. started cutting proto most pro wrestling style. I mean, people were, you know, Chael was the guy who lost by submissions, you know, couldn't, couldn't defend submissions. And now he's, you know, more hyped and more followed than anybody. And the thing is, Chael, I think I think this, the, the promos is helping Chael get his, get his, you know, get his confidence up and he's having fun, you know what I'm saying? Like, a man that's having fun out there is a man that's going to be winning. You know what I'm saying? Guys that aren't having fun, they start losing and they start thinking about, hey, I need to retire. Chael's out there having fun, doing his thing, 
and winning. So I, I, I don't knock him, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 I actually congratulate that dude for doing that. Cool. And, uh, you know, how's things at AK? Man, I love AK as much. They got a lot of fights coming up in the next couple weeks. Yeah, yeah, a lot of fights, yeah. Strike Force this Saturday. You got uh, Mike Kyle. You got, of course, Daniel Cormier, who I think you work out a lot with. Um, you know, you like training there. You like all the different training partners. Because there's, there's guys, you know, Cal Kingsbury is a huge dude. You got some big guys to work with over there. And, um, you know, I'm sure wrestling with Daniel, and you got a great wrestling background. Maybe, maybe a lot of fans don't understand that you got this real legitimate wrestling credentials and big titles, right? Yeah, a lot of people don't get it. And I, don't, I don't care if they don't because a lot of them, they're just stupid. You know, if they hear what um, certain, certain people say in uh, in uh, over the commentary and they run with that, you know. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. You know, if they want to know, how, they, they wanna know if I, um, how good I was or Daniel was or anybody that really wrestled at this high level, they can always see the USA Wrestling and get our videos and see how we did overseas and Random countries like Azerbaijan, Uzbekistan, Turkey, we've been in Siberia and Chechnya, wrestling the best wrestlers in the world, Belarus. They can always find out where we, you know, our track records. Spe speaking of that international experience, I mean, you you came out of the gate. You all came out of the gate running in MMA, and you were cool as a cucumber. I mean, like, do you think that's why? Because you're so used to going against whoever it is. You think that wrestling background really, really is what did it for you? The wrestling national experience, really. Uh, yeah, I, th I think wrestling helped me because I, I was used to competing. The international background because like you know from traveling I kind of understood certain cultures and I kind of understood like how certain cultures acted like you know um like for instance like with Gegard Mousasi who's a good fighter I saw what you know when he when he beat when he beat Babalu I was like man he celebrated okay but all his other wins he was kind of quiet like the Russians because you watch Satyev or you watch Gazumov and you watch you know um you know Gitsalov and other you know other wrestlers you know what I'm saying um, Lebedev. You know, they're good wrestlers. Um, when they win, they just do this. They're stoic. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're stoic. Yeah. Like Fedor. So I, when I saw Fedor winning, I was, and Fedor walking to the ring, I was used to seeing that because I seen, I seen it in Russia with my own two eyes. So I know how Armenians and Iranians are. Because when they win, they like me. They celebrate. They have a good time. You know, I've been to Iran before. I wrestled in Iran. When they win, they celebrate. I've seen Armenians win and wrestle. Celebrate. So I was like, this dude is Armenian. You know, say, but you know, Armenian slash Iranian. So I was like, something ain't right here. You know, what I'm saying for him to be acting like Fedor, I, and that's why I was like, I think he's acting like a fraud. You know, what I'm saying in that sense. You know, I'm not saying I'm not saying that. Um, you know, he's a bad fighter, but I just felt like I, that was a tale that I saw that he wasn't truly confident. Yeah, I think he knew he was beatable the whole time, and he would even say so in interviews. Basically, I mean, he just he didn't claim to be this invincible cyborg robot that that everyone made him out to be. Well, no, and he's a great fighter. No, I mean, he, he is. He's a good, but he can be wrestled. And yeah, you know, everyone has weaknesses. I, I had to wrestle him. You know what I'm saying? But I think that you know, he's, he's a good fighter. Um, I you know I think I think that I mean, he knew he knew that uh, he you know he's gonna be a tough fight and he came ready and uh, I, I like to do. I have no problem with him. I like watching him fight actually. So yeah. we don't, we're not we're not like friends, but I actually went I went when I was in Japan. I watched him beat Kiyotaro, which was a big win. I watched him beat um, um, Musashi, which was another big win. And I, I, he's very talented, especially stand up. I, I, I said it before, as far as like just pure stand-up, no one's messing with him. I don't care who it is, because he's, he's just that good. What, uh, you, what do you, you think Daniel's going to get it done in a couple nights against Barnett? I mean, Barnett is, is a skilled guy, but you, you think Daniel's speed, or you think Daniel's just hands, what, what, what do you think? I think, I think everything, I think, I think more of Daniel, not just speed, because Barnett doesn't do it with speed and hands, but I think it's going to be Daniel's mentality that's going to do it, because I don't think that Barnett's fought many people with the mindset uh, Oklahoma State wrestler, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Because we go, we we come with it. You go and you go hard. You go, you go yeah, nonstop yeah. from double Yeah, you know, we try to, you know, like with me, I'm looking to end careers and make you go down a weight class or knock you out. <laughs> Daniel's doing the same thing. When we wrestled, we used to have we used to have made place bets on who could uh, retire the most people, because we wanted to go out there and beat someone so bad that they had questioned their career. So me and Daniel played every year. We place bets, you know, you know, ten ten dollars that I retire more people this year than you do. And we used to do that. That's, that's our mentality. Oklahoma State Cowboy. Well, back to TNA. You got a tag team partner lined up yet? You think they might do something like that with you? Well, you know, uh, you think maybe there's room for the Wolfman? I mean, King Mo and the Wolfman might be good. You know, it's either that or I'm going to be going in there with Dan Sever and, you know, we'll, get, we'll make some stuff happen. Because I love, I do like pro wrestling shoot style, stiff style. Like like making it look like a fight. It's exciting. I mean, I mean Barnett's matching the Japanese, really Japanese style. 
that's what TNA slash Impact Wrestling, they're going to start going to that style pretty soon, over, over within the next few months. So, uh... Well, through all snow a word, you know, maybe he'll remember me, you know, I'm uh, training with Severin and stuff, and okay. he was tight with Severin, so, I'll you know, win. maybe I'll be out there. All right, thanks for your time. You guys check out ProMMANow.com for all your information. Subscribe to my YouTube page, Dan the Wolfman one You got 500 instructional videos and interviews. And uh, thanks for having me at our house today to chill out. Thanks, bro. MMA Elite, represent. All right, thanks.